So a very good morning, evening, afternoon to wherever you are in the world. Welcome. This is Hugh Colo TV, www.humancolonies.org. Today we have a very, very special webinar planned. Our usual uh, star, Jim Charles, is not able to be with us due to some other commitments. So we've required, uh, acquired, required, acquired some lovely, lovely guests for you today, including our founder, Max, who's uniquely been able to find something that he's been wanting for a long time, and we're so happy for him to do it. And we also have my partner, Kim, as well, who will be channeling first tonight. She'll be channeling Alma Talk, most likely, and maybe some other entities. So if you have some questions you want to get ready for Alma Talk, please do that in the special hangout that's been provided. If you haven't been invited to the special hangout, please talk in Hukolo 1 and we can add you in there and get you into the line. How it's going to work today is that we are going to invite you in. We're going to give you a link to come in to ask your question to the beings, the entities. Once you've had your question session, if you could leave by yourself, and then that will allow the next people to come in. And we just form an orderly queue. I'm British, so I'm used to queuing. I don't know about the rest of you, but we're trying, <laughs> we're trying to keep it flowing. So I just want to give a big welcome to Max, first of all. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Max. Thanks for coming. And a big welcome to Roxy. Thank you for having me. Uh, big welcome to Kim. Hi, baby. And an even bigger welcome to my star, Sabrina, who has been so essential in what we've been doing recently. So thank you, Sabrina. Sabrina's going to be running the questions inside the room. I'm going to be helping with the Hangouts on Google+, Plus, organizing who's coming in. So if you've got any questions, anything you've got lined up, talk to me in Google+. Plus. I've got my laptop next to me here so everybody can do it. So I hope you're all clear with that. We're ready to go soon. Kim's going to get into her little state of trance, so she can go ahead. Just want to announce that on the 23rd of May that we're going to have our special with Rob Gauthier. He's going to be coming in. Um, it's a little later than the normal 10 o'clock EST, so that one, keep an eye out for that. Also, the 20th of June is the 8th Encounters uh, special event, which Jim will be channeling Lakesh along with Rob and Krista Reiser. Um, Roxy's uh, YouTube channel, Odyssey Ascension, got to give a big shout out to that, and also to Sabrina's uh, new channelings and new events that she's having with Montserrat, keep an eye out for them as well. But Jim's back next week, so all the usual questions that you have about human colonies will be appropriate for that. Today is going to be Open Sandbox, you can come in ask what questions you want, interact with the entity. If you feel like you have more affinity with a certain entity, speak up in the chat box, ask if you can go first. Um, I'm sure people will be allowing if you have more relevance to, to the questions or the person that's resonating with. So enjoy it, have fun, and um, yeah, we'll start inviting people in very, very soon. So over to you, Kim. We'll start to... Uh, Put you on camera, and we're bringing Alma Talk for you guys. Have fun. Hello. Greetings, Athens. I wish to bless you this day. I understand there are questions you wish to ask. Please relay them to me. Okay, I want to talk. We are awaiting people to come in and ask questions. Is there any messages that you may have, anything you want to impart in this now? Yes. I would like to address the Hukulo community. There has been much growth in recent times. I encourage you all to continue on your path. I encourage you all to continue to look inward for direction. For your journey is individual. 
I am excited, as you would say, to be amongst you at this time. This is very special. I appreciate that. We will co-create an amazing moment. Let us begin. Okay, so I've given the link out to some people now. They're going to, um, hopefully some people will come in. We have some more time. Yes, we have more time if you want to carry on with some more. Yes. I would like to address the situation. I understand there has been what you would call some site-to-site -site visitation. If I am asked, I shall elaborate on this idea. If I am not, not, it is not appropriate. But I would like to say, amongst you are great manifestors. The greatness of you in your practice and mastery of manifestation is a wondrous vibration to witness. You are gaining great ability amongst your community to manifest. May I suggest this idea? Those of you who are experiencing what you believe, and your belief is most important, you believe is occurring, I would like to suggest to you that perhaps you are effectively manifesting these existences. When you effectively manifest anything, what you do is you experience it in your totality, in your congruent expression. Now, an effective manifester in the process of manifestation will actually experience experience perhaps a premonition. This is the point I ask you to ponder, I ask you to look deep within and look to find your answers. This is where they lay. I request this with love and respect and complete delight. Is there more time? Yes, we have guests now, but if you want to... Oh, lovely. Lovely. Hugo guests. Hello. Hello, Elma Talk. Thank you for being here. Um, Hello. Hello. Does anybody have any questions? Mm, you were discussing the site-to-site. -site. Yes. Um, so that is going on. Yes. If you believe it to be happening, and do you? And this is yes. a rhetorical question. Yes, there is your answer. You are manifestors of greatness. Mm -hmm. Effective manifestation, I am repeating myself, effective manifestation includes the final step being a total experience of that which you wish to manifest. So simply, I leave this in the wondrous heart of yourself. I and simply want to address that. What Thank was you. our government's reaction? Did they agree with it? Do you mean in the recent meeting? Yes. Ah. The contract in itself has not altered. It remains the same. This particular meeting that just occurred was not about negotiating rules and regulations. It was actually what you would liken it to a public relations exercise. There were moments where the alien delegates were able to reach through to the humans and share humor. Do you understand the importance of this? This last meeting was much more about building a relationship between the aliens and humans. This is what will bring you that that you ask for, that that you desire. 
So please appreciate the work that Takur has done, the wondrous experiences of the other aliens in attendance, and understand it is important that they do come to form a bond between them. Vibration, unison, reaching out to each other congruently. Once this is achieved, there will be great leaps and bounds in progress for you to actually have what you call site-to-site -site visitation. So this recent meeting, the fine points, little changed. What did change, however, is the relationship between the aliens and the humans. I hope you can understand how much importance this actually is. This will elevate and escalate the experience you wish. Have I answered your question? Yes and no, because um, the the fact that well the whole meeting was supposed to be about our governments agreeing to that fact that we can go site to site, and I understand it's a choice. Yes, my friend. They have no control over that. There um, two occurrences. There is always probability. As there is free will and as there are variables, we can only look to probability. What occurred within that meeting was a wonderful resonation of energy, yes. As I say, the ink on the paper, the fine print was not adjusted. Perhaps at the next meeting, yes, definitely. There was more humans that embraced the alien delegation. This is so important. I cannot stress this enough. Relatability, the ability to actually view each other. There are more and more now who are able to actually look forward at the aliens and not feel fear because they shared humour. They even shared self-humor. They viewed themselves in the eyes of the human and they reflected the same and they made what you call jokes about themselves. This was endearing to the government. And you can see that in building this relationship it becomes imperative. Once that relationship is built Willingness will follow. There is purpose in this. It may appear to be stagnant. It is not. Have faith. Have faith. It is progressing well. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anybody else? Anybody else have any more questions? Can this entity uh, talk about herself and explain more about her? Because I'm not quite familiar. I am not hearing well. No, how could you speak up a tiny bit, please? I need to put the mic. Sarah, can you repeat? She would like to know if you would explain more about yourself. She doesn't really know who you are as an entity. Yes. Yes. My name is Alma Tok. You may call upon me using that. I will arrive for you. I am, for the sake of your own understanding, though it is really not essential or relevant, but I appreciate that this assists in identifying myself. I am from the twelfth dimension of the third realm. I inhabit an energy that is one step away from source. I will speak to you much about vibration because this is how I, what you would call, view the surroundings. As I am amongst you at this time, your individual vibrations, I note 
They are stunning. Hukulu is a marvellous community. You are doing great good. Have faith, dear people. You are wondrous beings in your 3D world. I ask you again, please look within. I counsel humans. I counsel aliens. I am known as a priest, a high priest. This is not something I share very often because of your religious reference. So I am also known as leader of all leaders. I do not like hierarchy, please. Do not see this as intimidating in any way, shape or form. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Uh, been on Earth? Thank you. Have you been on Earth? Uh, have you been on Earth? No, I have not had the pleasure. I have not incarnated. Uh -huh. My experience of mass when I come to Earth, as I am with Kim right now, I have been able to experience situations via Kim. She has allowed this. And it is wondrous. I have not incarnated through myself. Is that helpful? Do you have me lost sound? Yes. No, there's still there's still sound. How hmm. is it that you can relate to the humans if you have not incarnated here before? Ah, very good question. Every single cell in existence, I reference existence for the, sta for the sake of this example, retains a vibration. It has a resonance. Everything is energy. Everything is molecular light. Now, each individual of yourselves on this planet and those of others, myself included, we vibrate in energy consistently, as do you. Now, this is how I identify the singular hues. You all have individual hues and vibrations. Now, this is where I attempt to assist and offer understanding in unity. This is very important. Your vibrations amongst you, you have an effect on each other. Now, this group is familiar with this idea, yes. It is important to note that your resonation, your vibration is ever-changing. It is something that occurs minute by minute by minute in your time. You are wondrous beings. My goodness. Your lights are bright. You are a blessing. Please know you are a blessing. Vibration is the answer. Thank you for asking. Hello, Alma Talk. This is Dan. How are you? Dan, hello. Well, thank yeah, you. Oh, I wanted to thank you so much for our chat the other day. I really, really, really enjoyed that. Mm. Yes. Oh, you are so welcome. I hope it was of assistance to you. Yeah, it was. It was. I wanted to, uh, I also wanted to welcome uh, you to be able to connect with me at any time that uh, wow. we can find it beneficial. That would be really awesome. Lovely. Thank you, Dan. Much love and blessings. Much love to you, too. Thank you. Is there anything else? Anybody else have any more questions? I just wanted to ask a brief question. <clears throat> hello, I will talk. My name is Sharon. Yes, hello. Hello. 
Um, I remember uh, briefly discussing um, an idea of a teardrop, and I was hoping to hear some more about that. Uh, missed the last part of the question. Elaboration on the teardrop? Yes, please. Yes? Yes, certainly. <laughs> I will begin at the top <laughs> for the sake of this example. There is what you would possibly call a god. It has many names. It is source. It is a collective, an abundant, infinite collective of energy and vibration. Now the experience of the teardrop was simply a divisional thought pattern. Now, use the teardrop symbol because Earthians re re relate to that. If you imagine a simple teardrop, tiny and pure, releasing itself from its hole, it chooses to move outside of this particular boundary that it has imposed upon itself. It did create this boundary itself. Now, it dropped as a teardrop would, not far from source, weightless. And as you see often, as, as it is spoken of, as conception in your world. Perhaps this is a very good analogy. If you are to view this teardrop as a being in creation at that moment, the cells divide, the cells separate, the cells and the thought patterns and the vibration begins to create. Now the creation has been vast. That's, this is something there is no question about. This is how we are all relatable back to source. This first teardrop actually, in effect, created each of you. Other planets also. Wherever there is being, wherever there is vibration, wherever there is harmony, there is frequency. Now, you have frequency, I have frequency, all of Hugolo has frequencies. You have a direct line back to source. For you were created from that first teardrop. At this point in your evolution, you are discovering about the idea of the teardrop, the idea of where it is things, things began, where the thoughts were initiated. So please understand with the teardrop idea that one of the reasons I shared this was for you to understand that you are the greatness of that teardrop also. You are the greatness of source. You have the ability to go deep and quiet within yourself and seek the resonation of the teardrop. If you are able to visualize it, and you can imagine the greatness and the wonder and the beauty and the light of source is in fact within you. Is that enough explanation? Yes, that was beautiful. Thank you. For me. You. <laughs> Is there any more questions? Any, anybody else have any more questions? I do have a question. Hello, Alma Talk. Hello. Hello. I'm so pleased you are here. Thank you so much for being here with us and our Hukalo community as well as all of humanity and your messages that you've been bringing through to us. They've been very beneficial. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, you're in, I, in light of your 
remark about harmony. Through the help of Osiphius, I was able to understand my connection to harmony, and I understand harmony to be a part of not only my higher self, but I'm feeling something a little bit deeper in that the harmony is somehow the harmony of all, the harmony between all that is. And I was wondering if you might be able to maybe shed a little bit of light on that for me. Uh, are you speaking amongst your community or within yourself? I think my, I'm trying to understand the connection to, to harmony and all that is. One moment, one moment, please. Philippe, you need to do that. Uh, sorry, Wendy. Sorry. Uh, that was beautiful. You can see over here. Yeah. Okay. Wendy, would you like to ask the question again, please? Or down the top, would you like to answer? Uh, please ask. I'd I'm trying to reformulate my question to be more clear. I understand my higher self as harmony. And I'm trying to understand, I feel as though that is a purpose of mine as well as a name, to bring harmony to all that is or all that I encounter. I, I'm trying to understand this a little bit more. Ah, do you have a goal with harmony in mind? I think that's what my goal feels like, as though it is to bring harmony to all that I encounter. And I, I do feel as though I brought that to the meeting as well. Yes. And your beauty in sharing that reflection, you have answered your own question. That's wonderful. Thank you. The answer is yes. If you would like me to elaborate, I can. If you wish. Certainly. Harmony. I have spoken before about the alignment and congruency of the individual human. Now congruency includes the spirit realm, the subconscious mind, the conscious mind at times, those who can quieten it, it can become more effective, down through the chakras, energy, the vibration again, very important, the vibration of you, coming down, feeling you, becoming congruent. Now, when you are congruent and you are fully aligned, this is the moment where you feel most at peace. This is harmony. My dear friend, if you, in your belief system, wish to bring more harmony to those around you and may I ask too, very important, please bring it to yourself. This, in this way, it is a harmonic sharing. So you in your purpose, in your quiet self, have found the wonderment that you resonate with, your vibration with the vibration of harmony. It is beautiful. Please embrace it. Share it. It's wonderful. Thank you for asking that question. Thank you for your beautiful answer. Namaste. Namaste. Felipe, do you have a question? Or anybody else? I have a question about those who ask to uh, be there holographically because I don't have any memory of being there. However, I know I, I have asked to be there. Mm -hmm. And so I was wondering, were we actually there? <laughs> ah. When you mention and refer to the word where, 
In your perception, could you be more specific for me, please? At the meeting with the government and the aliens, um, I was wondering if we were actually there to view the event happening holographically. Ah. When you say we, can you please... To those who asked, those in the group here who asked to be there, Yes. were we there? Because I don't have any memory of it. Yes. Yes. This is understandable. Now, again, I'm bringing you back to frequency, the idea of vibration, and also your ability to manifest. If there is a deep resonance within yourself, then you know the answer to that. I can, I can reflect for you what actually happened in the, the idea and reception of others there. However, it will be a different perception from every single one. So I say to you, answer your question yourself, honestly, truthfully, rhetorically within you. Spend some time speaking with the you, looking for your remembrance, understanding your belief system, choosing what serves you and what does not, this will bring you your answer. It is you who actually knows. It is each that actually had the desire, the occurrence is an individual experience, individual vibrationary focus. I will ask you to look inside yourself. This is most effective at this time. And one more question to that, Matt. I'm sorry. Um, if we were there, were we perceived by the other humans in the room? I will share with you this much. If visitation had occurred, you would appear in vibration. At this state, in the evolution of your world, your population, the mass of vibration, wondrous and beautiful as it is, you do not, when you look to one another, see the vibration within. If you were to travel anywhere astrally, it happens at a vibrationary level, frequency. Therefore, if you were to appear in energy form at this meeting, you would not be identified by the humans present. They are not able to view the vast hue and the vast frequency reaches that make up the being that you are. Thank you. It was a sense, yes, amongst the aliens, definitely not amongst the humans. Thank you very much. That answered the question. You're welcome. I'm pleased. Hello, Alma Talk. This is Sabrina. Ah, Sabrina. Hello. How are you? Very well, thank you. And you? Very well. Um, in terms of the meeting, um, what were the feelings or perceptions of the group of um, uh, the extraterrestrials that attended the meeting, um, like, and where do we go from there? Mm, I'm not very clear on your question. Uh, are you asking in uh, further meetings what may occur? Yes. If um, you like what? What did they perceive? Um, what did they take away from the meeting? The aliens or the yeah. humans? Uh, the the aliens. The aliens. Ah. 
That was actually celebration. It was a wonderful time. The resonance was very high because what you would call success in their efforts, as you would work diligently and, and with great commitment at your efforts, so did they. So making, creating these relationships, allowing the resonance between of the energy, it all occurred. So in the alien idea, this was a great success. This is what the aliens took away and this is what they will build upon in future meetings. It's building the relationship. Now it's right. now is this is this the end of it or are there are there more talks to take place? Let me tell you there is always talks. They do not cease. What actually happens is the contract, the humans are that fearful that the contract that is signed between your governments and the aliens, if they like to simply have these meetings to reinforce that the aliens are behaving, that there has been nothing happen or occur outside of that which has been signed on the contract. So it is simply reinforcement. It's as if visitation of one of your use to a headmaster who has misbehaved. They are their behavior, their actions become more in the frontal lobe, in the focus of the mind, and their behavior is watched. This is the analogy I give you about how the humans are overseeing the aliens at the moment and why it is imperative right at this time the aliens are not overstepping the boundaries agreed upon. This may be a huge setback. This is not the desire. The desire is to build a relationship of trust and faith and honor. So this is the example that I offer you in answer. Is that enough? Um, and what about in terms of what, um, as an individual, what each individual wants? Was that taken into consideration? What each individual wants, do you mean amongst your populace? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes, I will elaborate a little further. Mm, one moment. Yes. The individuals who attended all left with something completely different. Resonance is a very personal thing. And it's understood, thanks to Takur, that this may be what you call take some time to build this relationship as with any relationship it is a being, it is an existence, it is a constant resonance. So this relationship in future is going to bond and create trust, allowance will come further. This is the goal. In the recent meeting there were several, in fact more than half of the humans who attended who actually began to be able to relate to the alien experience because the aliens were relating to the human experience. So each of them took away something different based on their environments, based on their belief systems. They are vast amongst your countries. The effort though was that there were moments of unity, unity in humour. This was beautiful. So those moments when even the humans looked to each other 
at the sides were laughing. There was delight. There was levity. It was wonderful. What a sharing and bonding experience. So this is my answer to you. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Um, Felipe? He seems to be muted up still. Felipe, can you unmute your microphone? Yes, hello, hi. Hello. Alma talk. Very, very uh, pleasurable experience to get to speak to you. Ah, oh, thank you. And you, dear one. Do you have a question? Dear one, okay. I have a question regards on how can we manage uh, physical pain on third dimension and, mm -hmm. and how can we deal it, with it if it's part of the contract that we have on Earth? Ah. Please remain mindful. The agreement or contract as you refer to it as is with the intention for you to evolve, the intention for you to heighten your frequency. Pain can bring stagnance. If you are experiencing pain, it is likely that what is going on around you at the time you are experiencing this pain, you need to be stuck in this moment for a reason. Understand, nothing of these occurrences is by coincidence. Now, if this pain is something that a being has been born with and must manage through a lifetime and find it difficult, there is much learning to be made from that experience. Now, if the pain is temporary and your belief system allows you to understand that there is amongst the human collective a healing collective also, that you may yourself contact the healing collective. Again, look within, understand your vibration, understand what the pain looks like. You will see it. Once that happens and you request healing from the healing collective, you will be able to match your vibration to the vibration of the healing. Sometimes it is done through humans in between. This is, this is absolutely appropriate. Every individual has free will and purpose. I give you the example of the wanderous Gentiles in his Reiki work. He is very effective in what he does because two reasons. He believes he is effective and his patients believe he is effective. Therefore, the consciousness receives this idea and it be. It is a similar experience for yourself when you are experiencing pain. If you seek relief from another realm, then this is how I say to you, reach out. Do you understand? Yes. Uh, he, he, he can't, he has a uh, internet problems today, so he will definitely listen to your answer. Um, thank you. He's saying thank you so much. Ah, you're welcome. Much love. Anybody else have any questions? Yes. I'm going to talk. I'm still getting to know you, and this is no harm. I want to know how are you helping us humanity and uh, how are we helping you in what way shall we help you could you elaborate on that yes it is a dual experience as your vibration ascends and I use this word deliberately because this is something that you will resonate with again energy vibration 
if oh one moment mm, my apologies could you please repeat the question I'm saying uh, I'm getting to I want to know more of you and how are you helping us uh, and how, how are we are supposed to cooperate with you yes. what are we supposed to do and how can we call for you in what in what case in what incident and yes. yes I encourage you in each of yourselves to understand the wonderment and the way that you function, what makes you unique. I wish to share with you these experiences where you may come to understand yourselves a little more. Your answers are within yourselves, your answers are within your own remembrance. Now there may be triggers here and there and this is what you call resonance. It's wonderful. Your belief systems are individual and this is absolutely appropriate for your vibrations are individual. So that which I effort bring to you is ask you to come to understand yourself and come to understand how to relate to the greatness in you and the greatness in others for you are great. Now in return I too am part of this frequency part of source. As I watch you grow, I grow. Greatness grows. It's infinite. It is eternal. In this way the vibration is shared. In this way we are connected. In this way I love you all. Is that helpful? I find you like an uh, angelic being. <laughs> ah, lovely. A compliment. Thank you. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, I have a question. Yes. What does it mean for the humans to begin channeling trees? <laughs> yes, very good question your plant life. Again I am probably stating the obvious however your plant life also has its own frequency. It has its own vibration. It too is connected to you as humans on the earth and above. They are watchers. Their function is actually to observe on the planet. They also have the dual experience of re-oxygenating your planet also. They absorb your carbon dioxide and they release you pure oxygen. So it is a, a dual idea that they exist. But there is feedback given by your plant life. And this is one reason why some of you have found that if you play music of a certain vibration around plants, these plants will thrive. It is vibration, meeting with vibration. They resonate and it's wondrous. The result of the mass is wondrous. This is just one example I bring you. I encourage you, please, attend to your plant life. They are here out of love for you. Remember, created all from source. This includes the cellular plant life. They are actually here in support of the humans and they watch, they observe. This is the reason this life form exists on your planet. Is that helpful? How, how do you help heal, um, like I have a tree that um, it's getting sick, so how do I he help heal the tree? Hmm. You may do this again with your vibration and the attention that you give to the tree. The plant does have a vibration of its own. If you wish to reach out to the plant, I ask you to first 
sit alone as yourself understand become familiar with your own Hello. I can still hear there you, Sabrina. I just can't hear Kim. Yeah, I think they're having some technical yeah. difficulties, so it's okay. We will. Uh, I'll wait a few for them till can get the internet back. Okay. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Apologies. Yes. Oh, Oh, may I continue? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Once you become familiar with your own vibration, then you may address the plant. Become familiar with the vibration of the plant. The plant will reach out to you with cure. The plant is aware of what it is required to stay in a life form. It will communicate to you. It is not difficult. Simply, it is that you must become familiar with your own frequency and be able to manage the frequencies outside. Look upon the tree, close your eyes and feel the difference between the tree and between you. Once you do that, you find a common denominator. The common denominator is source. By a source, the tree will communicate to you, this is how to heal me, and you will respond. Okay. Yes, that's because the tree the tree itself gave me an experience a long time ago. Actually that mm -hmm. was I think my first awakened experience, uh, where I became the tree. Um yeah. So I want to help the tree. The tree has been um, sick for a while. Um, so I want to see if I can do something for it. So you thank you. Can. Yes, you most definitely can. And as with everything else, love in its pure form is a magical healer. So I would ask you also to incorporate the vibration of love to the tree as well. I feel this will support you as you have had an interaction with this tree at else time. The frequency you will find quite easy to attain as you have already experienced it. Yes. yes. I, I'd like to ask you a, a question. May I ask? I'd like to ask you a question about the trees in uh, Angkor in India. They're, they're, those are in sacred places, and yet I see the roots of the trees gushing out. Why is that? You know? Uh, gush, did you say gushing out? Yeah, they're gushing out. They're not relaxed. They're gushing out, even they're though growing. they're in a very sacred area. You know what I mean? They're outgrowing. She means that they're like growing on top of the buildings in a massive way. Yeah. They yes. They're overtaking the buildings, and yes. they look huge and gigantic. Yes. Yes. Like an anchor area. If you you can spot the place, you see them growing yes. over the old buildings. They're gonna ruin the buildings. Why is that? Exactly. You 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 answered your own question then. It is an anchor. This area, the vibration of this area, for some reason, those who inhabit this area and the frequencies between, and I suspect under the earth also, there has been avoidance, a level of avoidance. There is a repellent of sorts. So the plant life that wishes to exist it's not acting or behaving as you would expect. It is something that does puzzle you. 
Yeah. This is and another so place. The place is a is a sacred place. I see it as so, mm -hmm. India, and uh, in Angkor, the the picture doesn't look right. Looks uh, a mismatch of frequency. Yes. Why is that? In your perception, yes, because in your reality, plant life exists in the ground, in dirt. I mean, you understand how plant life develops and grows. And this, this experience is unusual. So it's become of interest to many people. It is not simply that plant life must be rooted within the soil. Plant life is adaptable also. And it also may bring great symbolism. Now, if there are buildings upon sacred grounds, what plant would wish to impose upon sacred ground? Yet plant life is desired. So it's a mutual manifestation. Do you understand? Okay, guys. Um, I think it's time Kim takes a little break. If there's anyone that has an impending question for Alma Talk, if you'd like to make this the last one, and then we'll give Kim a little break here. Yeah. Caitlin, do you have a question, or Brian? Brian? Hello, dear friend. How are you? Brian, hello. I always enjoy talking with you. Ah, uh, you are wonderful to speak with. <laughs> yes, I... Um, uh, it's just, it's so fascinating how these multi-dimensionality of, of just everything, how we can see ourselves as a singular and then see a, our, feel a part of the collective at the same time. Yes. That, that is, it's so wonderful. Um, it's scary too. <laughs> it can be scary. <laughs> it is actually a safer state of mind for you. Yeah, There's we feel secure when you do grasp it, yes. Yeah, it, it's it's feeling like it's just us getting over our fears to feel feel that bigness, that grandness that we are, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just express it more. Really get yeah. out there in the arts and music and and somehow through poetry and just that brings happiness to other people, but really to yeah. ourselves. Yes, yes, it's perfect, isn't it? It's yes, wonderful. It's, so it much is. joy and playfulness and delight. I'm, yes, I'm, I know uh, you appreciate this. I do. <laughs> it, it's the scary part is always just denying that the self that that's part of myself within me. You know, it, it's it's hmm. it can be overwhelming at times because I'm the one who's getting in the way of myself. Yes. it really is. It, it's it's yes, overcoming the fears and 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 just realizing how grand we are and and you know. It's a lot of people on the planet. We are. We're afraid to go first. We yeah. want others to go before us to see yeah. if, and if they fail, then we say, ah, we don't have to do it that way. We'll try this direction or that direction. Yeah. So many people are afraid to go first. Yeah. And because they're afraid of their own failure, but if they look at it from a different perspective, that it's just a experience. There's no. Mm -hmm. Don't have the attachments to it. Don't put the judgments on it. Yeah. Just realize that ah, it's just it's just it is. That's mm -hmm. all it is. And yes. what you value, what you take away from it, that's the most important thing. Yes, beautifully said. Yeah. So, so I um not really have a question, just more of a statement, just to say I love you, my friend. Thank you for choosing Kim and giving her the the confidence <laughs> to to speak uh, in front of an audience and to expand. It's beautiful. Lovely. She's, she's facing her, her her fear. Beautiful. Lovely. Thank you, Brian. Much okay. love to your friends. Thank, thank you. Th thank you, Brian, for that. Um, I'm a talk. I think we don't want to tire Kim uh, too much today. And I want to thank you for coming and being with us and answering our questions. I hope you also enjoyed yourself. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and um, I want to say you're welcome to come anytime you wish. Oh, and thank you. 
and we will be speaking again soon. So thank you. Um, would you like uh, to say anything else before you go? Yes, actually, if I could just take a short couple of your minutes. Sure. My understanding is that this moment, as we all vibrate together, I would simply like to leave you with a visualization. If you may each shut off your eyes, become aware of the air and breath and movement of your abdomen, and then bring to your conscious mind your third eye, the vision as I share with you now, of joy. Feel it. Allow yourself to vibrate with joy. Allow yourself to vibrate with love. Allow yourself to embrace yourself. That is all. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, before you go, do you have a light language you can hear? I'm sorry, the question? Before you go, do you have a light, light language we can hear from you? Mm -hmm. as a uh, light language in my existence does not exist. We communicate by other means. And it is outside your realm of experience at this time. So the answer is no. It's beautiful. The meditation was enough. Beautiful. Thank you. You are beautiful too. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste, dear ones. And you may wonder us amongst your fukulo. I will bring him back. Namaste. Namaste. Okay, so next up we we either have uh, Roxy or we have Max. We did not decide in advance who was going to go first, but um, how do you guys feel you want to do this? Someone from the group of, uh, a group of Nir, maybe? Let's have a male energy now. Max will go, then, then Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> how, does, how do you feel, Max? How do you feel, Hang Roxy? on. Hang on. Time out. Kim, phenomenal. Thank you, Absolutely Kim. Absolutely beautiful. Extraordinary. Yeah. I love it. I'm so glad you jumped into the water and you found out it was fine. You went first, as Brian would say. You weren't afraid. You rocked your paradigm. I want to give you a big, you know, virtual kiss. Mwah. <laughs> Epic. Love you, Kim. Oh, love you, Kim. Love you, Kim. I want to give you a big hug. <laughs> yes, yes. We need that. Thank you for being so supportive as well, guys. I mean, hugs, I mean, hugs, hugs, hugs. <laughs> <laughs> hugs and kisses. Very good. Thanks. Booyah. Max, are you there? You want to go or you want me to go? Go to ahead. You? Thank you. All right. And greetings once again to the collective of humanity. This is what you call Osiphius and your idea from the Oversoul Collective Fire. I bid you a good day. How is everybody? Great. Awesome. <laughs> All right. 
most epic interaction we've had, a lot of perspectives, maybe, maybe, just maybe, behind the idea of the answers, there was a thread, was there not? In all of her representations, she said one thing and one thing only that resounded with every question, every answer was interlaced. That of, it's your reality. It's your choice, it's your vibration, it's your bubble of reality. The idea that humanity is out, let's say, looking beyond themselves for the questions and answers, much like Sarah answered her own question in that fashion. It was right there, as well as Noha answered her question. Maybe she didn't see it, but it was most certainly there. It all comes down to the individual choice of the I am. The representation of me, Osipi, Osiphius, Amaltok, in that representation, is the version, listen now class, the version of what you are allowing. Make sense? So whatever the message that I bring is within the framework of what you can perceive. Much like the light language that, let's say, was not now, truly it is there, but in a different frequency band of, let's say, knowledge. You can't perceive it, therefore you are working within the framework of your understanding. So the idea of Raising, ascending, your vibration allows more ideas to come in. You get different versions of me, different versions of yourself, different versions of all of them, group veneer and took her and all of that. As you ascend, we ascend. As we ascend, all that is ascends. As you ascend, all that is ascends. You are constantly reinforcing the universe, birthing yourselves by the universe and then birthing the universe in and of itself through your reality, your choosing, your exploration of yourself. Remember, class, this is about the I am that you are. The teardrop analogy was most beautiful. You left the idea of source and you were a teardrop on your own with your own identification in that idea, your own perception of what it is to be that idea of individuality. So you are born in the idea of one or all and the all are one, but the one is you individually creating the all. Remember that. Don't forget what you are, the individual I am to birth into reality for you. You are not obligated. Mm -mm. Obligation is limitation. It is only understood in that idea of polarity and we are in this polarity for the epic masters that you all are chose to heal it. So once again, I am honored to be among you. This is Osipius. If there are any questions, let's rock and roll. Booyah. Okay, Sabrina's uh, just dropped out, so there's uh, no one. Does anyone have any questions? Want to for Osipius? Or whomever you want to come in. That's a first, hey, Osiphius. Usually they're firing them right at you, left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe they're I... digesting what we just spoke of. <laughs> I have a question. I just haven't quite figured out how to formulate it. Okay. Well, don't formulate it because that'll be limiting. Just speak it. Speak your joy. Let it come out the way it is and then mutate into its perfect little flower. Trust us. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, I, am, am I online? Can you hear me? Hello. Can you just find Max? I can go with the question now. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, are you familiar with uh, Blavatsky, Helena Blavatsky? No. Uh, let the me founder of Theosophy. Let me tune in. The founder of what? Theosophy. Theosophy. 100 years ago. 120 years ago. A philosophy? Uh, theosophy, like theology, theosophy. Gotcha. Yes, got it. Go. Question. Yeah, she mentioned, it was one of the main messages of her, mm -hmm. that humanity becomes the sixth race. That is, the fifth race is giving birth to the sixth race. Mm -hmm. And also Bashar mentions the sixth hybrid race, that Yael are the fifth race and the human become the sixth galactic hybrid race. 
Mm -hmm. And the question is, is there any, is it the same number in the system? Is it the same? Yes. Is it the same what, last part? Max? Yes. What, is it the same what, the last part, please? Is it the same number in the system? Is it the same ID, or are they talking about different things? No, no, no. The same num numbering system. The idea of unison of one, let's say, let's say speaking the same idea for the collective to understand, we will stay within the numerical, numerical idea of what you understand. Most certainly humanity is the idea of the sixth thing, six ideas idea of a hybrid civilization upon ascension. The idea of Cryon just recently said we've been at this five times, which is most certainly. The state of vibration has got to a point to where this is the first time you've been close five other times. This is the first time that humanity has tipped the scares upon your 2012 shift, if you will, to maintain, if you will, just by love, being that of a light idea, hmm? love idea, on the ascension track, if you will, idealized. All right. So in that fashion, Cryon stated this is our sixth time around. You are the sixth idea to actually ascend in the physical reality within this idea of this universe. Very small fractals, billions, billions, billions of ascensions going about you. Hmm? You are only one galaxy within a billion galaxies of one tiny little universe. So in that idea with this co-creation, this entire universe co-creating the ascension of physicality, this is most certainly occurring and that is what you call in this space-time now accurate information. Make sense? Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. That helps. That mm -hmm. gives uh, much excitement to me because I love both uh, Bashar and Blavatsky. They were both are very inspirational to me. Very much so, yes. Um, Any other questions? Yes. I have a question on can you expand the idea of frequency, healing, vibration, light? Sure. All right. From the perspective of humanity, let's look at this idea. You are the thought behind the thought. So thought, you are thinking. You put energy with your isness, if you will, in its simplest form, your existence. You put energy to an idea. That idea resonates. Resonates two things, vibration and tone. But vibration is tone. Vibration is light. You are vibrating thought in a fashion. Bring it down to the idea of healing. Mm. First off, you all, every single now, frequency at your highest vibrational existence, your natural state, if you will. You can never not be your natural existence. Within your core, you are vibrating unconditional love. That idea is only distorted by the belief systems of your adventure choosing that of physicality heal the idea of the illusion. And wherever you focus different parts of you, your vibration shifts in and out in thickness of your filters, as we like to say. You're putting your, let's say, love into this idea, and that idea has no filter, so it easily comes to you. You feel joyous all the time, but you shift over to here, and here's a blockage that you took in an idea of a belief system to work through to heal that, of the let's say, to the human collective. In the idea of healing, it's all the same thing. The body, once again, is perfect every moment. Listen to that again. The body is perfect every moment, period. It shifts according to your current view of your own body. Mm -hmm. The body represents ideas of pain, of disease, not at ease, easy, and shows you in representation of physical ideas what needs to be attended to. You have termed it in that idea pain, suffering, disease. And how do you resolve it? Heal it. Mm -hmm. All right. Since you are already vibrating at a wonderful frequency of unconditional love, then you know that idea is within there. Mm -hmm. 
And the idea of the healing modality that Almontak has spoken about, if the practitioner is on board and the patient is on board, then the healing occurs. And the healing is whatever focus of that bubble of reality that those two co-create to heal the idea. Your frequency of intention of pureness going into that distorted part of the body, be it cancer, be it a headache, be it a broken bone, be it a blood clot, be it anything that you can define as something that your Western medicines and your Eastern medicines are defined as the distortion is what we like to call it. And then you heal it by the vibration of toning and your specialty, that of Sarah. And also you can do it with the idea of light. The idea of physical physical light in beaming a light on there is let's say distance toning sound will take more prevalent and then the light actually will come in in a later time you are playing with your lasers but it is a few nows from now before that becomes an idea of a healing modality but the tone is where the focus to realign the body the body is always harmonizing itself much like the trees are harmonizing itself you tune into that vibration you hear the trees, you speak to the trees, you can channel the trees because the trees are consciousness and consciousness has a vibration. The same with your modality of healing. You heal the way you choose to heal. No one's right or wrong, it is all individual. It is how it works to your highest joy. You focus upon the idea of a body that needs to be healing, be it your own or that of another, and then you focus and get that idea of co-creation to realign that vibration according to the tone of the light love that you're giving it. And then, hence, it A, B, C results, and if you judge it in that fashion, that's a part of your understanding on how to mutate it and become, let's say, more evolutionary in that modality. Does this all make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. You're I most welcome. Mm -hmm. I got a question regarding the healing modality. I'm Marie Kay. Mm -hmm. I'm practicing Reiki and I'm doing this energetic work upon myself and yet I found my chakras blocked on the second and the third chakras. Mm -hmm. So how can I do the alignment you're talking about that I'll, I'll be in the same vibration? What is wrong? And there's nothing wrong, period. Don't look at it like that. Okay? Make sense? It does make sense. So what I'm saying is the, the blockage, I find the second and third chakra are getting fatter in that area. That means there is a blockage, even though I'm quite aware of this alignment yes. and the energy That's work. Fine. Mm -hmm. That's so fine what, that what it's a blockage, do? most certainly. All right. What can there's I do? two things you can do. You can either get a outside healing of yourself, as Amotak just most grand is saying, if you get a healing from another human being as the intermediary, so be it because that's your permission slip to your now self of healing. If you are trying to heal yourself and finding frustrations that you can't do it yourself, then the idea is maybe use another avenue to mutate yourself, evolve yourself, and be healed in that idea. That's one way you can do it is choose another. The other way you can do it is do an inside meditation focused upon those two ideas. Let go of the Reiki idea and go within. Let go of the paradigm on how it's supposed to be done because that is limitation in this now for you. So we don't want to resist limitation. We don't want to fight limitation or solve limitation. We want to love it and let it go and find in our own self-expression, our own individual now, what else is available for expansion. You don't want to always use the same idea over and over again or we would all be on horse and buggy still. So in that fashion, you want to mutate your own healing upon yourself by following your internal, let's say, compass, if you will, your magnetic north that will give you ideas. They may not fit your current understanding of healing, but that's the purpose. We are not here to be repeaters. We are here to, let's say, explore the unknown. Make sense? So these are your two ideas. Yeah. Choose which one you will. Either one is perfect because that's you right now. Don't judge it. Don't think I failed. Don't think on this. Every time you call yourself something, you limit yourself. Right. Thank you. You're most welcome. Uh, 
when healing someone, if there is an attribute of something that they perceive as blockage, but yet they're enjoying that attribute, mm -hmm. how, <laughs> what do you do at that point? Do you just leave it be because that's their wish? Bingo. Okay. Bingo. That's the way, at that space time now, maybe that's the way they're feeling alive. They're enjoying that idea. But as yeah. of everything, once again, do not forget this. We are constantly expanding the unknown. They may repeat here, but after a while, everyone, okay, let's say you're banging your head on the wall. After a while, you realize that you it's not so fun, and the pain stops when you stop. So she, in that idea that you're referring to, that co-creation is getting joy out of it in a, let's say, painful way just to know that she's alive. Hmm? That's mm -hmm. her way of her own self-worth, which mm -hmm. a lot of people have. They do that, i.e. some people are assholes because they feel alive. <laughs> They're getting attention. That gives them existence because the fear is so detrimental of rejection, they found an avenue for existence. So after a while, when there's no more energy, like you just said, so be it, let it be, there's no more energy feeding, there is an actual issue there, then it dissipates on its own because the inhibitor of it is themselves. And once they realize they're doing it, they let go of it, and once again, it is fundamentally known throughout the universe that every human has the ability to heal themselves. This is her avenue for this space time now. Booyah. Yes. Thank you. Wendy, did you want to ask a question? Yes. Hi, Elsephius. How are you? Wonderful, Harmony. How are you, darling? I'm so good. I'm so good. I just wanted to thank you for all of your, your, your great work and I feel so deeply connected to you in so many ways and, and so many of other Roxy's entities and I just wanted to thank you for what you bring to me personally and, and I don't know how we're connected more than the Oversoul Fire, I know, um, and it almost doesn't matter. I just want you to know that your work is just timeless. Well, wonderful. Stand by. All right. Listen, our co-creations obviously are synchronistic. Every single one of you have all planned this out to find out more about yourselves through whatever modality works. I offer a perspective of expansion. You take the portion that I offer that clicks with you and you expand that area. You go over to another channel or another idea and get an idea from there. And that idea clicks another portion of you for healing. And all of this is a wonderful co-creation. And whatever I have brought to you, I am most honored that you found, let's say, joy within that. And we will continue our ideas and our own individual joy to offer many, let's say, angles of this grand illusion that we're all, let's say, co-creating for the ascension of an entire civilization. And it is once again my honor to be among you. Anything I can choose to do is only and always my joy. Mm. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Appreciate your Booyah. work. Love you so much. And um, just um, any messages you have for me, I, I turn to learning about healing and lightning this, and just want to know if you've got any little boost of advice for me. And with that, I will say a donate. Before you leave, do this for yourself. You are still in the idea, not a bad thing, but you've lightened it up, but it's still there in the presence. And this will bring you much release. Speak your joy in front of the ones that you perceive you can't speak your joy in front of. That public scrutiny is, let's say, daunting for you in some fashions. You've eked it out in different ways to other people and let's say, left little breadcrumbs that you're on this path and living this reality, but you're afraid in fashions hmm, to be on the 3D world and let that separation. That's the whole purpose, is to give ideas of perspectives. So when that perfect now, and you feel your joy, you need not hesitate and no longer. You understand, yes. I do. I do very much. Thank you very much. Booyah. Booyah. Okay, Caitlin, do you have a question for next? And then Sharon, and then I think I believe Justin has one afterwards.
Yes, hi, Hostavius. Caitlin, my elven queen. Booyah, good to see you again. <laughs> yeah, um, I have a question. Um, mm. If somebody has the same birthmark as another person, is there twin soul to that? Twin souls? Mm. Mm. Yes. Resonate with you? A little frustrating. <laughs> It, it does resonate with me. <laughs> As let's say, we've given, look into yourself, you answer your own question, trust the validation within. When you trust yourself, you expand yourself because you are the individual I am and this is your light show. You're bending the holodeck to fit your idea light. This is brought to you hmm, for a particular purpose. This whole question, this interaction with now and now it spawns this reality, and as soon as you said that resonates, poof, look at the reality just open up for you. Booyah. You're expanding. Uh, I love you, Osephius. Thanks a lot. Really. Love to you. Awesome entity. Okay, great. Who's next? <laughs> uh, Sean, would you like to answer your question? Okay. Um, one moment. <laughs> I keep hearing from you the moment is perfect and also about when you're feeling fear, about feeling through the fear. I would really like to understand that for myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Stand by. <laughs> Remember, when we mean the moment is perfect, it is your perfection that you just created. You cannot create unperfect. Once again, you chose, big picture now, step back and look at the big picture. Your God, individual perfection, period. In humanity exists the idea of the illusion. We all know this. You have polarity, if you will. Hmm? You buy in imprinted upon your birth, on your heart, belief systems that resonate from the inside out in your cellular DNA from your past experiences and those co-creations and your belief systems being fed to you by your parents. This is why you came here, to heal that. So in the perfect moment, you birth your energy through your belief systems which perceive your reality. The idea of waking up is to realize you are perfect, you are love, and you push your love through the taught belief systems that are now understood as fear, and that's what we want you to engage in. You want to not avoid, not shovel off, don't blind your eyes to that idea of fear, because fear is what it is not. It is an illusion. Hmm? It is not fear. It is an idea of a journey to remember you are God. What greater way to know your, let's say, God, to not know your God? You don't know your God to remember your God. What a journey that is. So you chose that, and the belief system tells you you are fearful. So you be the fear, love the fear, embrace the fear, and now the fear exposes itself. Echoing that of conversations with God, you stare at it in the face, engage in fear, and fear dissipates because it cannot be what it is not. It is love. It has just been distorted through the idea of the illusion. Everything in existence is love. Fear exists. It is love, but it is a distorted idea of vibration representing itself by your own belief systems that it appears in your judgment, your expression of your framework as fear. So when you look at fear and love fear and embrace fear and say, ah, I've chosen this idea, the moment is perfect, and now I'm feeling fear, not seeing it, because seeing is a secondary translation. All fear becomes, let's say, is received before you actually see it, because it is the moment, and the moment is so instantaneously, and more and more of you are feeling the idea of fear. And it's not fear of another. It may be fear of public scrutiny once again or fear of abundance. And whatever way it represents itself, it's something that takes you out of the now in trust. Mm -hmm. So in that perfection, your fear is right there in the presence and you look at it and embrace it and love it and it transmutes. It cannot be anything else. So in that idea, what we mean by, in your fashion, 
engage in your fears, much like that of Kim. She was a little spooked about going first. Turns out to be epic because she did not condition it. She was fearing, but she also had the idea of anticipation, excitement, tilting back and forth between the two. And she said, I got a fuck it pill. Poof, she takes it and goes out there and expresses her reality. And she what? What did she do? She gave joy. She followed her joy. So therefore, the mirror can only give one thing, joy in return. And we all gave her our love and because that's what we are. We are perfect, unconditional love. So in your idea, you are birthing your fears, exposing them to you to show you what keeps you out of perfection in the moment, distorted, if you will. So in that fashion, please engage. Keep digging knee deep in it, and then you will see more and more when fear arises, you look at it and go, hmm. I understand this. I no longer choose this. It's not like fearfully saying, I no longer choose this, but it might come out, might come back, might happen again. That kind of idea, hmm, that dissipates to itself. You look at it and go, I'm done. Bye. It's like an old toy. You're done playing with it, and a new toy comes along. This fear is done. Pick up a new one. Oh, how exciting. More fear. Awesome. I'm a master healing an entire illusion. I've got this. So I engage in that fear once again. And as you are ascending your vibration, other ideas of fears can no longer co-create with you because the frequency bands are too far separate. It cannot even be perceived by you. Hmm? That kind of idea. So as you continue your journey, feeding the idea of fear to bring up fear. And now you no longer free this distortion. You feed this distortion because now this distortion that you let go of exposed the deeper depth of your own self-worth. Birthing this idea of guilt, maybe birthing this idea of resistance or I don't deserve that kind of idea. And it continues the journey as you are going. However, you all know in this space time now that it's easier. It's lighter. It's more beautiful. It's easier to be that of a light being on a day-to-day -day occurrence without being sheltered down by fear. You still birth it, but it's not in a series of nows as it was before. Your mind is not always ticking away on how, 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 what, 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 where, where, where. You're now, you're now, you're now, and then poof, you get some ideas and you work on it and you come back. It is simplifying itself, however, in the grandest fashion of evolution. Don't rush it. Be the journey because the more you be the journey of now, the quicker it happens. Time dissipates, most certainly. Does this help, Sharad? Yes, thank you. You're most welcome. Okay, Justin. Greetings, Asifius. Greetings um, to that, JC. So, spoke or sent a yes. message to Sister Roxy and yourself earlier mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. wanted to expand on this. So, what I got from what you just said, essentially with the results of the test that I got, mm -hmm. I'm able to exist in that reality without it having yes. any effects within yes. my physical being. So All right, stand by. Stand by. I'm going to give you something right now. If you say you have it, it validates it to a point. Now, getting rid of it immediately is a daunting task. You say, yes, I acknowledge it. However, I don't choose it. You lessen it. But when you make it a monumental mark, focus, it remains. First idea. Keep going. Okay. So just resonating with the idea that I'm, I've already cured myself then. Bingo. I'm in a reality where I've already cured myself and I'm just essentially waiting for that God, perfect moment. Stop. stop. No, no more waiting. You are in that reality. You've shifted to that idea. You were the 13th step echoing that of Bashar on the 12 step program falls short. You just choose a new timeline as if it never occurred. You give yourself a new memory of never having it. You're getting there, but don't wait for it because waiting 
you got to listen to this, guys. The mirror is perfect. If I'm waiting, I will give you back waiting because I am the mirror. Make sense? So the moment that I felt the release where I was just crying and bawling, that was the moment yes. where I found that timeline. Done. So be it. Now rock your world. Give it no more attention, if you will, and just go about your nows. Make sense? Yes. And every moment of the now is where you engage in whatever it is. There is no future. There is no past. There is only now. Don't, let's say, predicate anything upon it. You know now it's done, so be the now that you are. And whatever is in your folks' reality of joy, hmm, whether it's representing itself in the idea of fear, it is still joy because everything is that of unconditional love. It is another part of you to unveil and shine your light brighter. Booyah. Much like you have done with this idea. Make sense? Yes, and I'm to apply this to my experience with um, with heroin, with methadone, with pain pills, with all that shit, and finally aligning with the reality where I've moved on from it completely. And yes. I don't have created the reality of which people don't go through withdrawals when they finally choose to release mm. from it completely. Yes. That is a joy for you to do. Absolutely. You can give them that idea with your vibration that they don't need to go through withdrawals. Because someone did it in some space time now, and that was built into the what you call the algorithm of the cause and effect and the limiting idea of, let's say, drugs and them being off it. Yes, it was most certainly built in because the body felt that. That was the vibratory light encoded reality matrix effect of those two ideas coming together, the human body and the IE drugs, to obtain this. But after that, let's say, done with it, there was a withdrawal. But you can shift that by no longer validating ideas of withdrawals, period. Hmm? You are the epic god. You perceive your reality as you will. The entire idea of you birthing this tiny little fragment down the line, if you will, shifts an entire reality of co-creation with the idea of withdrawals. So booyah to you. Make sense? Yeah. Boo. You good? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're most welcome. Well done, Justin. That's brave. Good job, Justin. Mm -hmm. Justin rocked it. Booyah. Hello, Zephyrus. How are you? Dan, 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 the drywall man. Good to see you. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. I was recently visited by a being in my awareness, and I'm trying to identify the kind of species of the being uh, what I'm envisioning of its head, it kind of had kind of look like a, a sea turtle color head with these kind of weird, interesting horns and this um, gosh, kind of resembled a giraffe, but with the muzzle taken off with a monk muzzle kind of put on. That was its was that a souk? Because I'm thinking it was a souk, but I thought maybe you might know. Was it a suit? I don't think it was a suit. I think it was uh, it was them because it had eyes and a smile, and it had the uh, the way the head kind of wrapped around to these little horn things on it, and I, I couldn't quite tell. It very quietly. Mm -hmm. Do you want just the name of this civilization? I don't know what its civilization is. I asked if you want the name of it. Oh, yes, yes, please, if you know. Lecture. Lecture. A lecture. Not a uh, lecture, starting with an L. Lecture. Just Lectures like you with lecture. Lecture civilization. They are a here, lecture. they've been here, but now they're, let's say, being, let's say, represented. More and more of you allowing your, uh, let's say, keeping your appointments with your ideas of contracts are coming quicker, coming now. You have many representations of extraterrestrials and aliens popping up in lucid down to what you call physical idea interactions. 
and those will occur more and more and then they'll pop up over here and pop up all around the world and then the communications through your IE let's say groups this Hukulo idea here as well as your modalities of Facebook and your interactions with UFO let's say community will start validating more and more these physical ideas appearing with not only what is known but truly ideas in your terms new species the lexer species you are one of the ideas of that co-creation the idea was a little distorted it was what you were representing the frequency as but it is very close and just realize it'll mutate but now listen class you recognize through vibration not sight don't limit yourself that that is that entity however it comes hmm? Makes sense? yes yeah yeah that was, that that particular being had come to help me with like connections or something or it just or was it just kind of hanging out to look around no it never no one comes in here to hang around and look around except graze on missions on their physical idea reality this was okay. for you most certainly okay so this being has come to help with my connections and, and things. Okay. Yes, you've made a new connection, hence help with connections. Simple. Does this does this being that's veteran does does it have a name that that I can call it or that it would like to go by in my awareness? Maltot M A L T O T. Maltot. Mm hmm. M A L T O T. T T.O.T. Mel Todd. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Asifius. Thank you for that uh, clarity. You're most welcome. Sarah? Yes. I have a question about the Hathors. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, um, was the ancient Egyptian times as we know it, was that the first time they've actually appeared to humanity? or? No, they were most assuredly on your other two Egypts, the Egypt that you represent this time around is your third Egypt, but the, they were, let's say, present on the other two Egypts as well. They represented in that idea of what you would consider your hmm, yes, the discovered idea Egypt and that of Australia, which is your second Egypt that you took, listen class, there's no one Earth, you took the memories of these two and co-created this timeline to give you the Egypt of the second Egypt which really didn't happen on the same earth at the same space-time linear now that Egypt as well is uh, the Hathors there but they didn't represent what you call Hathors that you understand but they were all represented in the f idea of a physical God but you will see the acquaintances between the two speakings in the mystery school once this revelation of the second Egypt is fully exposed in that of your Aussie. Make sense? Yes, but I was wondering, one, where did they come from and did they only where bring... Where did they come from? Let's, let's answer one at a time. Don't run over yourself. Okay. Let's say the Hathor civilization is in fourth density as a, let's say, portion, the largest portion of their entire civilization hangs out in fourth density. They like fourth density and they play a lot. They were a civilization that, let's say, evolved from your physical idea into fourth density. They didn't start as a fourth density civilization. They went through the idea of physically going from 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D idea. And they represent, and they're out of the Akashica universe, but they are in galaxies, let's say, way towards the center of this entire universe, which is very distant from here. So in that fashion, they did their ideas. And found in the idea through co-creation the interest in that of humanity and has been helping ever since for eons upon eons they are representing themselves and much is what they're doing in the future of humanity as well in the nows they are preparing different ideas of four density earth and also preparing your new third density earth to host another civilization of physicality so yes they are most certainly here and now and they will let's say 
be here in many nows because they love humanity. Make sense? Yes. Um, Keep one more thing. The mm -hmm. technology they brought to Earth, was it just dealing with toning or something else? Because I feel toning something Toning and been... levitation. Levitation. You didn't build the pyramids by pushing them on, let's say, rollers. You levitated your Easter Island. You levitated your idea. That was the tone that let's say, did that. So it's not just tone healing, it's sound and what sound can do with vibration and actually have an effect on the environment. That's one thing. Also, the 12 indoctrines. The 12 indoctrines is the written script, if you will, for how to ascend. It is your class, if you will, on each school that you go through, your, each of your mystery schools of the 12. The 12 indoctrines of knowledge on how to perform an idea of ascension by reading these ideas and then going through the practicum of each school. That kind of a deal of ascending. Make sense? Yes, thank you. I was mm -hmm. working on that idea with the levitation and how to go about it with the sound and things of that nature. I'm, it's still tickling my brain. <laughs> Have fun with it. Let it allow and you know, expose itself. Beautiful. Thank you. You're most welcome. Dear Asifius, this is mm -hmm. Rogi here to talk to you. I have a few general questions regarding some members who have been experiencing what they define as blockages. These blockages are appearing in the throat. Would you be able to expand on a uh, generality of why these might appear? Mm. We represent the idea of that chakra in this now, and I'm tuning into the co-creation of these entities okay so I am echoing themselves if you will in that fashion their speaking is inhibited once again one of the biggest let's say inhibitors of humanity is speaking your joy you can go up to a stranger each and every one of you and say I'm awake I'm ascended and have no fear of the scrutiny because it is a stranger but when you go into your, quote, loved ones through the idea of your obligations, truly the stranger is pure love as you. They are the eternal friend. There is no difference. At one time, they were your father. Oh, yes. Or maybe your mother or maybe your sister or brother. But out of obligation of family, friend, co-worker, dogma of religion, their throat shuts down because they don't want to speak their joy especially with their spouses. That's the biggest inhibitor. They can speak to another easily through this modality of, quote, like-minded people, but we're all like-minded. All you have to do is offer your mind and allow the other to perceive it in like-mindedness or not. But either way, that blockage is going to continue as long as people in that fashion validate the blockage, one, two, Let's say, don't uncover within themselves what is always beckoning them. They all know that they're ready to speak. They're ready to say, hi, honey, I'm awake. I need to tell you what I believe. But they fear because everything will collapse of the little tiny castle they built as their treasure. Their family values, hmm? their husband going off the deep end, fearing that kind of wife or the wife you know, saying to the husband, the husband saying no, 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 and doing all that kind of thing. That whole modality is playing out. So that blockage represents itself as they cannot or will not, rather, choice to speak their joy. Make sense? Yeah, I believe that will answer uh, the people's questions really well because, um, I, yeah, from personal knowledge, I think that would really help them. Thank you so much. Um, I know uh, Shron and Carissa have a question for you. I'd like to ask Carissa first, since she's new to the group, just to ask her question first. Are you ready, Carissa? Uh, yes, I am. <coughs> Hi, dear Rock one. It's nice to finally meet you. My name is Carissa. <laughs> Greetings, Carissa, and how are you, doll? I'm doing well. How are you about yourself? Awesome, blossom. 
Um, my question pertains to dreams. I often have very vivid dreams. In the last week, I've been to this one place about four times. And it's always by a cabin by a lake. And it's very dreamscapey, almost like cartoony. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if that has any symbolism to my current life and what I should be taking from it. Let me ask you a question. Well, first, let me set a idea into place as maybe a validation of what dreams are. They are okay. representations. Everyone has at least, at least seven dreams a night. Hmm? The last one is the one you remember. You may, let's say, fall asleep, have a dream, wake up and go back and have another dream, but those are usually the lucid ideas. Now, this dream, this seventh dream, what does it mean to you to have a cartoon? What does the lake mean? What does the cabin mean? Is it serene? Is it surreal? Is it something that you yearn for? Remember, unique dreams. Fire to me in a dream means warped. Fire to another in a dream means fear. It is all unique in your own representation. Who better to tell you than you what you need to know? Make sense? So dreams show you in this fashion, hmm, the idea of what it means. So let's start with the cabin idea in the woods idea with the lake. Is that right? Yes, correct. Is it dark or light when you're there? It's all. It's always light. Like it's like mid morning when the sun mm -hmm. just rises. Ah, so it's morning. Yes, very good. What does that mean to? Um, for me, I guess rebirth and a chance to do something new with the day and help other people. Yes, it's a new day. Very good. Let me ask you a question. Do you need to help people? I feel like it's part of my path to help certain people, yes. Okay. So do you want to help people? Yes, I do. Okay. So there's no need uh, to help people. Yes, correct. Booyah. Let's just set that into play that you are <laughs> following your joy not your paradigm of obligation because there's no kudos outside of here there's no kudos in here there's all the perfect now that you do you're not doing anything to receive anything because when you do something with the purpose of receiving then you are limiting it to the idea of give and take there is none of that there is only now and receivership is always in play and giving is always in play every now make sense it does thank you very much Beautiful. It's me a whole new perspective. Yes, it's so beautiful to free yourself from anything that you would think that you need to do. There is no need. Need is lack. Lack is a hole in your entire heart that you are trying to fill with something else. You fill your own hole. When you're whole, you have no lying ideas of need because you're whole. So there's no hole to fill. Hmm. All right. So back to the lake. Are you by yourself? Yes, I'm always by myself, but in this one, in my other ones, I always had people with me, but this time I was by myself. And what is the cartoon representing? The cartoon um, feeling? Well, I know from my past life that I, I was in the Garden of Nim a lot, so mm -hmm. to me, it feels like that's where I go, but I'm not 100% sure if that's what, that's where I am. Mm, no, you're not there. I want to ask you, cartoon in this space time now, what did that represent to you? What does cartoonish represent? That's the key here. Oh, sorry. Um, I guess my childhood. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Uh, let's see. What um, was it when you were watching cartoons as a child? What did it feel like? What was that to you? Was it an escape? Was it an idea? Dig. Oh, uh, yes, escape. Yes, there absolutely. you go. <laughs> Bingo. So now you're finding this correlation of you escaping to this wonderful lake idea, your peaceful idea of place. The representation of this idea of a cartoon, remember, you must pay attention. Don't try to jump out of bounds, if you will, to what is being represented in the idea of something epic. Forget that. Okay? Most okay. let's say, people in past lives want to be the idea of Da Vinci or the idea of Beethoven. All of us were Joe Blow it down the street thousands and thousands <laughs> of times. 
okay that's the idea so keep it simple in the dream don't expand out and want it to mean something because you're trying to fortify your own I am when you're already I am you don't need an outside okay. help to f shovel you up in that justification that I rock <laughs> you do rock all right <laughs> thank you very so in much that for fashion that. you're welcome all right now in that fashion this is an idea of I need to get away cartoons were just your la la land you've created your la la land but listen now don't think for one second that this la la land does not exist it does it is a parallel reality where you are now listen now relating to how do you oh, relate okay. you're here relating to humanity this is a frequency that you have tuned into. You perceive it as natural, but it's a built-in algorithm in order for you to perceive sunlight, air, wind, sound, family, vibration. You exist in this idea reality. Much like if you went into the water, you would drown after a while if you couldn't breathe until you learned through many series of nows how to breathe water and become let's say relationship worthy if you will to live in that environment okay so what you're doing in this dream state it's going to be a repetition idea is you're relating to it you're relating 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 to it so in that fashion you're doing this idea for yourself to relate to this idea world so in that fashion you're becoming familiar with your own home that you've created for yourself to where you can physically shift there in physical form physical reality and no longer use the space modality of astral and lucid dreaming astral projection lucid dreaming are you following yes I do thank you very much that makes a lot of sense booyah Epic you're for very, you. Yes, you're very wise, and it was a great honor to meet you. Sending you much love. Much love to you. Sean, do you have another question you wanted to ask? Lordy. <laughs> that last one was wonderful. Um, I I do feel like I try to... Oh, I um, Don't worry. Say try. It's just now. It's not forever. <laughs> It's yeah, right, right. It's true. Um, I feel like I'm reaching. I'm trying to reach within instead of reaching out. I'm trying to tune. I'm trying to speak to other aspects, I guess. And I, um, I don't feel or understand much reciprocation. Um, yeah. I'll put, I'll leave it You're back. looking for reciprocation. Um, <laughs> Bingo. Understand? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Okay, it's a new member to join the room. Uh, Sean, were you finished there, or would you yeah, like to I, ask him? I think I'm through. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So the room's open, guys. If there's anyone else that would like to ask Roxy any more questions, um, I don't think we have too much more time left. Um, we want to get Max on the yes. on the ball as well soon. So um, if anyone's got any more questions, please go for it right now. Perfect. All right. Once again, it has been honored to co-create with that of humanity. Remember, guys, lighten up. Don't take it so seriously. You've done this. It's a blink of an eye. It happened neons ago, and you are way beyond what you understand yourselves to be right now. So relax. Have fun. Journey into the sandbox of the unknown and build your castle as you choose. You have the foundation of yourself, and that is all you need. Love. This is Osiphius from the Oversoul Collective Fire. I bid you all a good day. Now, I don't know. I don't know. Namaste, dear one. Thank you so much for that. <laughs>
Thank, Thank you, you guys. Oh. All right, Max is up. Beautiful. <coughs> Hello, Rock here. Hello, Welcome. everybody. Hi. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to have yeah, you on our so I will start with a little a little summary of what I was speaking recently. Yeah, let's start with uh, grounding. It is a new stage of development. You found each other, haven't you? Hey, everybody, nice you found me, nice. I found you, it's fun. You found each other, you're holding your virtual hands. You found light my like minded light workers. You are the heaven on earth. You are so elevated. You're so enlightened. You are so awakened. Yeah. It's a pleasure to see this network finally going live, sparkling with light. The greed will, the greed will surround the surface, will cover the surface. And it will, when the antenna is built, when antenna is complete, when the crystal is formed, the living crystal, when it is formed, it will be able to receive the new level, the new wave, the new awakening. It will finally will be able to energize, shine, and grab the earth and just pull it to the new reality, new density. Step by step, not at once, but that's the idea. Now, the topic of today, it was already brought up. You are facing each other. Hi, you are facing me. I am facing you. Now the moment is torn away, torn away, and face the physical world, face local people, face real people who you can touch. You have your back covered. Now you found each other. Now you're part of the community. You can support each other. Now it is the stage to face the world. You need to bring the world with you and the network is not complete yet. It's just the beginning. You have to find people locally, the ones you can touch, the ones you can interact with full spectrum of your energies. It doesn't have to be soulmate type of close relationship. Now is the time for you to reach and screen many people around, many physical beings. Screen them easily, asking them everyone, what's your highest excitement? Do you believe in aliens? Are you a hybrid? Do you believe in energy healing? And whatever helps, whatever helps. You don't have to start the conversation with it, but that's the idea. Screen and find people who are of your kind who are open already or ready to be open, the ones which you can bond with lightly. Light bonding, build your network, fill your notebook with phone numbers, real people, addresses, phone numbers, come together with them. 
that's the stage. And some of them, next step, some of them are going to be children. Understand, you're possible. You choose your mission, but here is an offering. One of possible missions for you, which you can choose, you could choose, you can choose, is to become a vortex and a stepping stone. Not the pinnacle, but a stepping stone. The people, the hybrids, the light workers, the enlightened ones, the ones which will raise the earth, surprised, might not have been born yet. They might be, be born, getting born right now. These children are the next step, the next stage, right? So go to children. Some of them are already children. Some already are grown up. Some of them just are babies. And you are needed there. You need to provide them with your enlightened mind, your integrity, your energy, your protection. Their parents, they don't wish them wrong. They don't wish them bad. But the old system is to fragment the mind, to put limitations, to put the traps, to put the fear in the baby, in a child, in a teenager, and support it there. You can offer healing to this. They are fragmented, but you can heal them together. You can provide unconditional support. You can provide friendship. Just a hint that there is more to life than a limitation. Of course, it's up to you. You can play it in many different ways. But the idea is that the children, if they keep the connection, where they're born unlimited, if they keep growing unlimited, if they keep growing as a whole, unbroken, they will be the hope. They will be the one which will help form in the final greed and lift, lift the humanity to the new stage. You see the crisis. Crisis is here. You just look around. It's crisis. So it's obvious the solution is needed. And surprise, the children are the answer. Play with them. Offer. You have that don't have to be your own children. Anybody, your cousins, your neighbors, go around, find a way to be helping with children. Just a suggestion. One of the paths. Dance with them. Play with them. These kind of things. Mm. That was a beautiful I brought many, many topics up. Anything uh, comes, please. Hello, everybody. Let's chat a little bit. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. You're Rojo? Rojo, yes. Rojo. That's a Rojo. Yeah. Hello, Rojo. How are you Hello. today? <laughs> nice ah, to see you. Ah, say, yes. <laughs> Hi. Well, I just wanted to say welcome today. Thank you. Thank you. Love having your energy here. It's my pleasure to be of service. I enjoy your company. <laughs> What's your highest excitement of this moment other than being part of that conversation? Mm. I've asked questions that were deeply on my mind earlier, so I'll give it to someone else. What's your favorite tune of today? What's your favorite word of today? Mm, now. Ah, now. Mm, all right. Now it starts. Now it ends. Now is everything. 
Now I am in joy. Now I am deciding what I will do next now. Now I am expanding. Beware, I can blow up, but that's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, go ahead, sure. Yes. Hello, brother. Hello, brother and sister. I'm your brother and sister. Hello. Really? Sibling. Yeah. I'm your sibling. Hello, sibling. Yeah, you are uh, your hero? Yes, yes, I have that, yes. <laughs> so what are you? Oh, yeah, I am a young Yael. Flying, circling around the earth on a ship, and I have both female and male representations. Energetically, I look like a tall gray. Can uh, you answer gray. my questions? Yes. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. You can sing. We can sing along. Yeah. You want to do this conversation singing? It's um, mm, it just came. That doesn't matter. I am uh, to your service. What's your highest excitement at the moment? What's your question um, or message? To go to the colonies. Ah. To meet the graphic near, to meet you personally, face to face. Ah. Yes, yes, that is great. The colonies are our great joy. It is. Uh, yet to become physical, but I would be happy to visit you spiritually. We would be happy to uh, bring you up spiritually and join this matter for the moment. We uh, are bound by agreements and negotiations. We cannot do physical things until the humanity is ready officially on the surface and as a human collective as well. I see. But yes. But I know that uh, Israel said the yes. The are the... great hope and great development. Yes, what did you say? Uh, I said that uh, we already heard that Israel said yes among uh, Iran and Iraq and Germany. So uh, they already accepted the Gilfiknir uh, side to side. Oh, I'm not aware. I'm sorry. I'm behind the news. Ah, okay. Um, so, if Israel said yes, do you know how do I <laughs> go? Mm. Uh, I have no clue. I'm sorry. Uh, nothing <laughs> new comes here. Okay. All the it's same okay. stuff. Hold the hands, be in joy, apply, apply, apply. Can I ask nothing you a, a, another question and then I will let other? Um, I know that one of my Yahil uh, past life, I was some sort of a um, librarian of knowledge or something like that, that I helped um, reform the history of the Yahils or something like that. I was in charge of that or something like that. Can you see those uh, past life? Yeah, no, yes, no, yes, no. Ah. So no and yes? I, I will try to speculate. How about that? Okay. Speculate. speculate. <sighs> The country, the tribes walking in sands. Ah, happy people, simple people, the only people. Yeah. Great teachers, many miracles. Natural miracles taken as absolute truth. Because the reality was a miracle. The reality was a fairy tale. Darkness wasn't that dark at the time. The death wasn't as scary at the time. You can talk to gods just like that. 
You can channel gods just like that. Animals were speaking. The plants, the flowers were talking. The water, the sand, they all had souls. You were the creators. You served each other. You served the gods. You served the land. You carried the secret knowledge, but the secret was so shiny it shone through their box of secrecy. Many rays of light were emanating and shared to each other. Yeah, that was the early time of Earth, before the technology, before the great growth of population, before the dogma, before the closing up. There were pockets of lower vibration and there were bubbles of very high vibration. If you were in a bubble, you could fly. If you were in a bubble, you could manifest miracles, heal instantaneously, create things with your mind. That's my speculation for now. <laughs> OK, well, thank you very much. And you're more than welcome to communicate with me when I'm dreaming. Thank you, and you are as well. Many blessings, and I will send you an image of a chameleon. Yeah, chameleon. That would be a mental message and symbol for you. Okay. Rose. Oh, ah, sorry. Yes. Aroho, this is Roe. Ah, Roe. It's a pleasure to speak to you, my Yael friend. Having pleasure. Myself, uh, a yeah. high percentage of Yael DNA inside me, I feel rather connected to that beautiful energy that is emanating out of Max right at this moment. So I just want to thank you thank for coming you. through. Being Thank you here for having the fun to be here. It's wonderful. I would like to ask, um, what's your involvement with Gurk Fitnia? Do you have any involvement with them? Yes, I am uh, here on Gurk Fitnia, one of Gurk Fitnia ships, and I walk down on the earth once in a while, looking like a human, sometimes female, sometimes male, like take different shapes, just enjoy uh, my highest interest to study human relationships and networking and my latest interest, how do you establish new relationship, how do you start the conversations. So that's my specialty for, for the moment. I'm Jan and I'm not much involved in major decisions yet. I'm more on the periphery, uh, researching things, establishing ideas for the mm, human ways of building relationships and also light worker ways, human light worker ways and relationships between light workers and not so light workers. So this is your highest excitement, correct? To be doing Yes, these. for the moment, yes. I'm young, I'm looking for new ways, but that is very exciting, yes. Yeah, I often find myself going from one excitement to the other very quickly. Sometimes I want to be doing this and then all of a sudden I change. I want to be doing this. Uh, do you have any uh, uh, clues or any suggestions on how to follow things through a little bit more? Mm. Yes and no, yes, I know. The secret is that it is a secret for you and for many because it is there by design. You see, many of you are here just to get experiences and some of the you, some of you are 
have a task to get, to get as many experiences as possible, not as deep, but as many, a huge range of experiences. You see, your previous incarnations won different Earth. The Earth changed so much that only in this little slice of history that situation exists. So, so collecting collecting the experiences could be the highest task and the fact that you fail or succeed in it doesn't really matter. The fact is that you experienced it and the fact you go somewhere and then you get blocked means you're done with the lesson. Now it's next to go, it's time, it's time to go to the new lesson. Yet, it doesn't mean that you have to drop it because you have to strive to succeed. That's the paradigm of the reality. You are a light worker which needs to go and experience this new paradigm, this new transforming bubbling reality, bubbling with opportunities, bubbling with failures. Bubbling with opportunities and bubbling with failures. Then the time of the crisis and then the time of the rebirth, of birth of new, new earth. Yeah, so strive. Your contract is not fixed. It is a blueprint and if you hit the gold mine, try and try and try. When you hit the gold mine, you will see everything flows in your direction. You are now going with the flow and everything is so wonderfully matches. The puzzle kind of comes to together. Not that it will be easier, but if you feel, oh, that feels great, I'm on a good path, follow it through. But if it feels that mm, I'm blocked here, the computer crashed here, your higher self, your spirit guys, crash your computer. In 50% of the cases, that's their job. You know, that's what is permitted. It's easy, easy for them to crash the computer because giving you specific messages is very limited only to critical situations. But crashing, blocking, putting obstacles on your way is, they can have, a, how do we say, a big budget of those. The budget of mischief is huge and the budget of specific messages is limited to very needed circum circumstances. Ah, so follow your highest excitement and don't worry about not following through. Don't Thank worry you. much. It is if it feels good, it means that you're on the right way. You need to collect these experiences. Some of these you can use, you might be using later in this life. And some of these you might be using later in other life. There is that border between this life and other life. Ignore it. Collect the experiences. And do your emotional work. Process it in a proper way because that is the key, that is what is absolutely needed. I hope it helps and answers. Uh -huh. that, that does help a lot. Thank you, Rohat. Thanks a lot. Ah, thank you. Anybody, let's chat a little bit. I can give you my uh, speculations. <laughs> is it possible to not follow your highest excitement and have a, a happy life. I forgot to say much love, by the way. Love you all. Much love, Sean. You puzzle me. I don't know the answer. I'm not that smart. Oh, that's a puzzle. So happy life, not highest excitement. Mm. 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 I don't know. Maybe. Sounds unfamiliar, but maybe. Yeah, let's speculate. Highest excitement to not follow. So if you are not, if you don't follow your highest excitement, do what do you follow then? 
uh, because you're so distracted on just say you know you have a job and you go to your job and you're so focused on working at the job and you never ask yourself well what's truly my highest excitement ah I see now Oh, there are many options. One, I can imagine a substitute happiness. A substitute happiness. Like your highest excitement is one thing. You wanted to create, you want to transform, you want to grow up. Instead, you are being given a substitute, surrogate excitement. And you follow this one. It's not highest, it's like mediocre excitement. Uh, material excitement. You can have happy life with that, but that happy life would be surrogate happiness. Yeah, it's possible. But happiness is, yes, happiness is something so fuzzy. If you follow your highest excitement, happy life is not guaranteed. It's a bumpy life is guaranteed. Yes, if you follow your highest excitement, a bumpy life, a bumpy ride, a spiral down, up, down, up, and every time on the new level. Very bumpy. It is fulfilled. You can call it happy, but it's really painful. And I advise you take this pain as much as you can care and transform it into joy. Take more and transform it. That's you like a pain transformational grinder, pain grinder, yeah. Take it, transform, take it, transform, take it. Hmm. It's not a pain anymore. It, it's joy. It's not a pain. It's an opportunity. Ah, that's pain. Let's heal it. Oh, it's not pain. It's a, it's a new flower. Yeah, that's a different kind of happiness. So that's my speculation on the topic. Hello, everyone. Sean or anyone, uh, please Thank continue you. if you like. Uh, you are silent. Uh, a cat face on yellowish background. You are silent and blinking. Sean. Oh, Sean. You are still silent and blinking. Yes, I'm giving other people the opportunity to speak. Oh, okay. Other people. Caitlin, would you like to speak? Hey, how's, how's it going? Caitlin? Are you there? Hello. Who may you be? Hello. Who are you? You said, how am I? I yes, I said, how are you and who are you? Oh, um, hello, I am Rojo, Rojo, uh, Max's uh, Yael acquaintance friend. I'm channeling, channeling from Max, and uh, I, mm, my highest excitement at the moment is learning about human and light worker networking, interactions, relationships, and establishing new interactions, and screening different humans in your neighborhood, fine, light-minded, like-minded light workers. How are you? What's your excitement at the moment? Any questions you got? Uh, I do have a question because I kind of I do I do want to get an overall perspective on people's, I mean, entities, different perspectives on it, so <laughs> I asked this earlier to uh, Osipius, what does it mean if you have the same birthmark as someone else in the exact same spot in the, and it's the same shape as well? I, I, I got your question, thank you. Mm. Oh, what is the shape? It's circular. Ah. And is it a secret word or is the spot? Where huh? is it? Is it a it's secret? On the Where cheek. is it? 
the right side ah. of the cheek, by the mouth, kind of. Ah. And do you feel that your other person with the same spots that they are related to you spiritually? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> what do you know I'm about asking. them? What do you know about them? Uh, I don't really. I I know some stuff, but not mostly. I just. <laughs> Have you interacted with them? Yeah. What did you feel? Did you feel positively? Yes. <laughs> What uh what is your birth date and what is the birth date of the other person? The the month and the, the number. Uh, these mine is December seventeenth and his is April fourth or fifth, I think. And yours, please repeat. December seventeenth. Ah. Ah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not that smart, but I can speculate. <laughs> ah. There was a nice research in India. The idea is that the trauma in the past life would cause a birthmark in this life. Very okay. interesting. Like, if a person was shot or had other trauma, it would show a birthmark, which would be just ah, mechanical, I would say. It's kind of mechanics of reincarnation. You see, when the body is dying, it dissociates from the etheric body, it dissociate, dissociates from the physical body. And if there is a trauma, that dissociation might be a little traumatic for etheric body, so it has a certain um, trauma in it, left over a scar. Yeah, the trauma of the death leaves a scar in the etheric body. Now, that can be transferred to the next incarnation, and in a certain age when it comes, when the birthmarks appears, it can be the same age when the previous body has had a trauma. That sort of thing. Now, why would two people have the same thing? Maybe it is the same soul incarnating in two different people? It's not very common, actually. Mm -hmm. Usually when uh, they decide where to incarnate, they don't bring the same soul in the same Location they would spread it out because otherwise there could be some short circuits, some some shortcuts, some misfunction of their matrix reality. So other thought could be that it's not the whole soul; it's just a component of the soul is common between you two, and your birth dates are pretty unrelated, pretty unrelated, related but not much. So maybe you have a component of this. So that's my humble speculation. I'm sorry, it's so, so trivial and mechanistic. I don't have anything poetic to bring to you at the moment. Mm, let me bring a poetic shine light, sign, shine light on that. Mm. Around your mark on the cheek. Ah, it's maybe okay. it's a kiss of wisdom. How about that? The <laughs> snake came to you in a past life and kissed you in that cheek, and it gave you wisdom. How about this? That will give you something to ponder about. All right, sounds good. Hey, uh, may I ask a question, please? Yes, yes, Sean. Uh, okay, it's sort of like a two-parter question. The first part is, yes. do most Yael have human uh, DNA in them? I missed some words of the question. The first two words. 
do most Yale have human DNA in them? Yes, yes, we have tons of human DNA. Tons. Okay, we so are about hmm, at least roughly at least half your DNA. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the yeah, but Yale, unlike humans, Yale, mm, humans are very diverse in many ways, but you have pretty much human shape. Unlike hu Earth humans, we have more variety of shapes. Some of us look like the greys, and some of us look like humans. So some of us can go on Earth without transforming ourselves and look like like humans. Earth humans, yes. So the other part of the question is, what type of elementals would you connect to? Would you connect to Earth elementals, or would you connect to whatever that other species that's in you, your DNA, is connected to? Uh, I don't know. It's not. That okay. question is doesn't resonate at all. I I'm lost. I know what you're talking about. I have nothing to to contribute here. It's okay. I love you anyway. Thank you for asking. I will ponder about that. No input at that moment. I'm completely blank. Maybe it's time for me to wrap up with, or maybe there is some burning question which I could answer. If there's no other questions from anyone, I've got a request, but I would like to put the question to other people there to see if they would like to ask you something, Rohan. Yes. I, I, I just have a quick question, actually. I just wanted to say hello Rohan. Hello. Yes. Hey, Wendy, yes. Hi. Hi. I know I have a lot of Yael in me too, so I just wanted to say hello to you and my family and give you all my love and tell you you're such a joy to be here with us, so thank you. Yes, um, we send you our love and the images of flowers and blossom and the images of universe, the cosmos, shining with new lights which are now invisible. As you awaken, you will see the flowers everywhere, the rainbows, the patterns, the geometric patterns. So we send you the image of geometric interference of colors, many Thank circles you. interfering to each other. Yes. I'm lo I'm looking at a beautiful bouquet of flowers and I'm smelling their beautiful essence right now so perhaps we were connecting to the flowers together. They are very yes, beautiful. Yes. I hope you can smell them. They smell really wonderful. I picked them from mm. the garden myself. What's your favorite flower? Wow, I would have to say probably hyacinths and yes, roses. Yes, that was the word I wanted to say, hyacinths. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what I, well, that's what I'm smelling well, right hyacinths. now. Hyacinths, yeah. I'm smelling I hyacinths. I recently experienced that, mm, hyacinths. Oh, yes, that was shooting straight through. Yes, it's like, oh, I don't know, hard to explain. It's a, just a beautiful explosion of the senses. All right, so I will wrap up on that. Unless there is burning question, I will give you a blessing and exit. Any burning questions? Sean, did you have a burning question? Yes, thank you, uh, Rojo, for um, presenting yourself here with us. Today. Hello, thank you for having me. Much fun <laughs> and appreciation. I wanted to ask you what your highest excitement is. Oh, at the moment. My Pretty highest nice. excitement is beautiful expansion of senses. Yes, that is my highest excitement. Senses, in terms of sensations, 
and in terms of common sense. How about expansion of common sense? The earth is so <laughs> nonsensical. Oh, nonsensical. It's so fragmented. It's, you know, you see humans walking on the street, you see them as whole. But in fact, you see fragmented minds walking on the street. One moment, one mind. Another moment, another mind. So fragmentation is the cause of disarray. Integration is the prescription. So by today, prescription to your humanity is integrate, integrate, integrate yourself, integrate your mind, be whole again. Expansion, beautiful expansion of common sense, of integrated self-perception. Find who you are and shine. Find who you are and shine your frequency. Now, turn away from your monitors, walk into the world, shine, and find the ones who shine in response. And say hi to them. Say to them something nice and establish a slight, a light, a beginning, a little distant, emotionally distant connection. You don't have to hug everyone unless they want to hug. Establish connections with many people and start building your local network. Bring them together. Come to the meetings. Come to meetups. Shine there. You don't have to interrupt everyone, but when it's your turn, shine your truth. Shine the part of the truth which you feel would help them, will help them to do the next step, to resonate, to integrate, to heal. Yes. Start building your local network. Continue building your local network. Expand your local network that is needed. You are stepping stones for ascension. And the networking is the key for today. Thank uh -huh. you. Many blessings. That was beautiful. I wish you beautiful expansion of senses. Goodbye. Thank you so much, Roho. <sighs> oh, it's a pleasure for you to come through and many blessings to you, the IL, and to Max. Thank you so much. Thank oh, you so much. Hello, everybody. Yes, thank you. Oh, thank Max, you. hi. You're awesome. You know that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, a pleasure to be of service. <laughs> thank, you. Oh. Exactly. thank you, Max. All right. Hello, everybody. A pleasure to be of service. I need to step out. I am exhausted a little bit. I. I, it just kind of overwhelms me. Between the sessions, I'm, uh, I'm shaken. My reality is very fuzzy. So I need to disconnect and disconnect and disconnect and, uh, and uh, reassemble. Disconnect and reassemble. That's my <laughs> highest excitement for the moment. Go, All right. go, re go reconnect. Yes, and then reconnect. All right, goodbye, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you again. Much love All to you, Max. Thank you, Matt. Bye, Matt. Have fun. Have fun. Good, 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 good luck Thank with the rest you. of the webinar. Yeah, we're just going to end on a few um, uh, blessings now. And um, but I think uh, we're going to ask uh, Sarah and Wendy to do some blessings. So if anyone else wants to do any, they're more than welcome as well. But um, who would like to go first, girls? I'll go first. Sarah, take it away.
Namaste. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you all for being here together. Your energy is of love and unity. Nisyatu kuha nama tuasutu. Kima hila nashuatuha. Kima lana hiswatu kusho na hiwatuso. Imahala na kasuatu mahitu shohakotu. Mahala na kwasumaha, ahatua na kwasutu apia shita. Ki mahala no akushua na mianatia soatu kaki shatuha. Miki liatua nahi, haushua kasua na mianua kasutu hashu. Mahala no akwashatu kaki asanya tu hatu kaha. Pisia tu kwasha takia taki tu koha putu kwasha tu kahitu. Hila tu kahe siamia noa kasa tu hashi kakia satiha. Miyala tu asuna hakoa. Ima hasu chu akoa tu mahila kasia tahitu. Mila hi na shati ako somahi. Mahu o tu koa siamia noa tu akasi wahisha. Mahaya kahi na itu. Maya shakahi na waha sumaha. Aru haku wa mahi wa sati kasitu. Mila ha suaki. Shanu wa kai ata kia maha yuwa tushu wako. Mahalu wako sutu ha shani akiha. Maria ya hi na hisuha. Mahala kasitu haku naha. Maria ta kisa hitu. Karia ha. Awaha suma haloa tuku suha. Mi kalaha nuaku, mi waha suha. Ki maha wa ashu aku ha suha tiha. Mi laha sita ki tuha suma. Ahia tuha shutu kakisi. Mi mala tuha. Ahi hashu ami. Mi mawa hashu aku tupa si. Mahala tuwa suna yeshuha, ki hasa na nyanwaha, isha hala tuwa suma hitu shuka, itahi sa nyanwaha, mahuasha kitahi, sanoha muatusa, mahala aswa naha, shika hitu, milahatu, 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 isha hi katuwa suha, namaste atuwa kusha, hivati. Tuomataka tia suno tata koata niata namaste dear sister thank you Brian you came in at just the most perfect time as usual <laughs> all right I'll give a blessing shoko no no ti lakana ni shakana ni akoroko to sana ni karai shakata toria. Kana nesu to koatara, ni a ka shokodo ni a karate, o shkodo, ni a ka leg of skodo donanai, kas kum shkun, kani o roko, nani ya kato suwa, ni shakani a kana nani a kotoa, i yana so goa, ya i shkana i ota, kani la koron shkunu di, kana pakurushi kana ni kototoa, ka sho shua, ni ya kotoa. Shotoa tadia, u lukodonani a katadish kara, kareski kanani, kuwa, i yadia, shuwa niaka. Thank you, Brian. Wonderful. Kim got some of those translations. Um, unlike Jim. She can't mm. flow them all out, but she's picking up bits and bobs out of that. I wish I could have got a recording <laughs> as you were as you were talking in your languages there, guys. Um, a little bit more practice, and I'm sure sure you'll be flowing, eh, baby? Mm -hmm. 
So I want to thank you all so much for today. I know it's really different with not having Jim around. And I just want to give a big shout out to Max, Roxy, and Kim. And unfortunately, Safira can't make it. She has internet problems. And it's gutting because I was really looking forward to having Arusha coming through. And yeah, just give yourself a big pat on the back, guys, for doing what you've done today. Cause thank you all. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Kim. That was so beautiful. Thank you, Amatak. And you guys are just so awesome and just love being in all of your energy. And Roy, just great. I know the time, the time difference is excruciating for you guys. So thank you so much for all your effort. I know. I know. <laughs> so thanks, you guys. Thank you, Kim. It was beautiful. And thank you. Let us know if you do get any translations, Kim. Sweet, sweet girl. Thank you. Applause sure. all around. I love Kim, it, everybody. Kim, Daryl Anka might be calling you for a session. And Rocky and Amphibious and Rojo and I mean just everybody. Yep, it was it was really a great day. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Hugo has got it going on. <laughs> well, what would I, you baby? I, I actually hear Bashar actually does actually um um, yeah, yeah consults with Amatok and is allowed to, <laughs> what to say, what well, to say. So well, then Am really Amatok knows that Bashar and I are very, um, <laughs> yes, we're very united at the hip. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, um, he's my guy. He's a Essasani twin, is he? <laughs> yeah, Bashar, Bashar and I have, have a long relationship. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just learned some new things about that, which have been very exciting for me to learn. So, yeah. Uh huh, and that that actually just answered a question that has been a burning question for me. So thank you. You didn't even know you asked it. I mean, answered it, and I didn't even know I asked it, but I got it. So thanks. <laughs> Beautiful. Roxy, do you want to add anything towards the end? Since you were one of our guests. Mm, just freaking epic, you know. It was a whole new, I don't know, reality of this Saturday, and it turned into a beautiful epic moment once again. A lot of yeah. good stuff, guys. A lot of good well, stuff. I mean, and you too, Roxy. You're just more you're more. rocking our world. You are you're expanding and growing before our eyes as well. And you know, to see the changes that have come across in your life for the last couple of years have been just absolutely fun, isn't it? Oh, no, outstanding. Just and we see each other, we all see each other grow in different ways, you know? Yeah, it's freaking epic. It, is, it really, it is, really it is. is so cool. So much fun Beautiful. to be with you guys. Yeah. Beautiful. So, Lovely. If you've enjoyed today and it's been useful for you, the usual speed at the end, we've got a donate button on our website, humancolony.org. You can donate to the website, to Max, uh, myself. Um, I'm going to be doing more workshops in the future. We just had an exciting one teaching people how to use teddy bears to channel with, using permission slips and all these things. So if anything has been useful today, we, we accept all sorts of contributions. Um, I'm not sure if Jim's back next week or not. Um, I'll let you know in advance about that one online. Um, but I just want to be give a big heart warm thanks for everybody being part of it today. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to check out Roxy's channel, um, um, uh, uh, um, Odyssey of Ascension. Yeah? On YouTube, yeah. Just go to Odyssey of Ascension. And if you need to contact me right there on the home page is, is the link to my website. So don't hesitate to contact me if you want to hook up. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Namaste, one of all. Oh, may I make one announcement before we go? Please, please. One announcement. Um, I'd like to let everyone know that I am having a healing hangout next week, Friday. A healing hangout. What time? So, uh, at 2 o'clock p.m. Yes. Eastern Standard Time. Perfect. So if anyone wishes to join, they may contact me, Sarah. Um, either through uh, Quantum Galactic Society on Google Plus or on Facebook. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Sarah. Looking forward to that. Yes. I haven't set a date yet, but I would also like to share that in the near future there will be a webinar that will be held on behalf of Almatoc 
is actually uh, to contribute to his learning about humans, in particular affection and sensuality and sexuality. So uh, that sounds <laughs> exciting. Yes, <laughs> yes. We agreed that this is how we would do it. So uh, Will you fix the date, or you put yes. it online? Yes. Oh, yes. So I'm a date sure. all the time. Yes. yes. Saturdays <laughs> or Sundays, whatever. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. 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 very much for tuning in once again, people. You're all expanding in so many beautiful ways. The, the flowers are so unique. The colors are vivid. Keep doing it. Keep on growing. Keep expanding. I love you all, and we'll see you again next week or in the Hangouts. If you don't know how to join us and you want to get in touch, leave a message on the Google Plus or the YouTube videos. We can add you to our circles, and then we can get you in touch. We can get you online. I know there's a few more people that wanted to come on today but couldn't. Get yourself the Google Talk hang, uh, plug-in so you can join us, and then you can come and interact and have the same fun we do. Love you all, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Love you, love baby. Bye-bye. Love you all. Love you all. Much love. Hello Much to love. the friends in the galaxy and the universe. <laughs>